Well, uh, since you brought up quantum particles, <laughs> did you know that the standard model, the standard model of particle physics, is the most accurate scientific theory that's ever been proposed? So you can think about it this way. So if you're plan, if you're um, predicting, is the word I was looking for. If you're predicting something. You can predict it to a certain value. So, you know, uh, 10 decimal places, for example, would be super, super, super precise. Right. Uh, you know, oh, we're going to predict this to, you know, 10 decimal places past the decimal point. And some of the theories to do with the standard particle model and with, uh, to do with string theory can calculate things to as many as 10 or even 20 decimal places, which is much more accurate than in any other type of science. Yeah, I love this shit. Like, I didn't even care. Y'all can take it. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I have been studying is the, ex the rate to which humans could expand throughout the universe. And I, I learned about a very interesting theory this week, which is called the cosmic span theory. That's delicious. Indeed. And the idea is if we wanted to expand at the maximum possible rate, what we could do is we could send out messages to everywhere in the universe at the speed of light and say, you know, make this machine or make this probe, for example. And to terraform the planets where we would send out this message so that when we eventually get there in our spaceships that it would be ready for us to inhabit. Now this uh, has been explored in fiction many times and, and uh, it usually does not end very well for the people who are originally on that planet. So uh, I hope that that is not the way that it goes. <laughs> Uh, another one that I was learning about was uh, how far out into the universe could we potentially travel. And so uh, I'm sure everyone has probably heard of the expanding universe and how um, the, uh, the, this, it's this um, dark energy is what it's called, where the galaxies are getting further apart. And a question that many people have is, well, is it eventually going to affect the Earth? Or is it eventually going to affect the Milky Way? And the answer is no, not for a very, very, very long time because the amount of gravity pulling together a galaxy or even a cluster of galaxies is much stronger than the energy that's pushing them apart. So you don't have to worry about the sun getting farther away for any, any significant length of time. But, uh, so are you like a physicist? Are you a professor? Are you your hobby? Like what, what, what gets? I am not yet a professor. I would like to be. Ready? I would like to be. Uh, haven't started that process yet, but I would like to be. This is just a passion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone who uh, knows about the autistic special interest will know. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> So uh, the answer to the question of how far out can we get is approximately 10 billion galaxies if we traveled at the speed of light. So uh, the absolute maximum in terms of uh, in terms of how far out that humans could get. All uh, and we can see much further than that. If you look with the Hubble Space Telescope or one of these powerful telescopes, you, we can see up to. Uh, like 20 or uh, 20 billion light years away. And there is, it is impossible for us to reach those galaxies, even with perfect technology, because they are further away from us than we can travel at the speed of light with how fast the universe is extending. And the, they're in the past, right? That's right. That's right. So when we look... <laughs> Another physicist in the house. Absolutely. <laughs> And when we, uh, when we see those galaxies, we are seeing them as they were. So there are some places in the universe where we can look out so far 
that we can see them only a few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang. After the particles started to come together and form the very first atoms. So I hope that I've inspired you to explore cosmology. Ricky has a question. This is what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> yes! yes! I like it. How could you, or when will we be able to explain objects that are going like 15,000 miles an hour and making a 19 degree turn and going 90 billion years, uh, miles an hour out of this? Sure. So you're talking about the, um, let's see, the UAP, the Unidentified yeah, Aerial Phenomenon? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, this is a Fascinating question. I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you, Professor. Oh, yes. Well, well done, students. <laughs> it's usually you. Uh, I might actually have to do a whole uh, a whole four minutes on this one okay, at the yeah, next. Uh, yeah. Do a little... uh, I'll do a little bit and I'll have to prepare one for next week yeah. because. Hypothesis. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Maybe but maybe in short, if you had asked me this same question a year ago, I would have said something like, well, you know, there's all kinds of weird videos and, you know, we don't really know for sure, but it seems like it's most likely some type of weather event or a hoax or something. We don't know. That's what I would have said. But now we have congressional hearings about this. Today, right, we have... When I was, I was in the Painted Desert, which is in the Petrified National Forest, and there was this huge rock face where the ancient people would carve petroglyphs in it. Mm -hmm. And there was a spaceship in it. There was a wow. spaceship carved in rock from 6,000 years ago. Mm. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, as opposed to even a very it's short time ago. Totally off the rails. No, no, no. It's, it's, it, that type of evidence is something that, you know, again, only a short time ago, a scientific-minded person would say, oh, you know, it could be a, it could be just a leaf, or you know what? <laughs> Whereas now, it the burden of proof has shifted. So one of my favorite, one of my favorite scientists, named Michio Kaku. Oh, I love him. He's great. He was on the news recently saying, look, the bur the burden of proof has shifted from instead of it being a fringe theory, or you know, people saying. Oh well, you know, I I found an alien spaceship and I was probed. You know, this, these types of things. You know, obviously people dismiss that as ridiculous. But the burden of proof has shifted to now the government agencies and all these uh, people who have these supposed videos and evidence. They now have to disprove yeah. that it's aliens. So yeah, that's why. Like, pilots of like Air Force jets right. that are seeing it. Okay. We're, we're off yeah. the <laughs> um, you, you do some Googling and hypothesizing, <laughs> Professor. We'll check back about you. Stay tuned. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Good luck, Professor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>